NASA's Artemis program is a huge deal. So is the technology behind the agency's plans to power a moon base. While we've already seen what's planned for the trip back to the moon, when it comes to transportation, suits, and more, there are still quite a few aspects we've yet to see. Whether that's the buildings for a moon colony, the finalized Starship lander, or the method of powering progress on the lunar surface, we're left with a few unknowns. Although some of those might stay unanswered until Artemis's slowly growing launch date arrives, glances into the power problem continue to appear. And while many were expecting solar power or another known renewable source, NASA threw a, well, partially unexpected wrench into the works. It's looking at fission power. Now that isn't too hard to understand why the agency would choose fission, but it's interesting considering how volatile the ingredients to a fission reactor can be. After all, when dealing with elements like uranium and plutonium, things can go wrong quickly. However, nuclear fission is a quick, effective, cheap, powerful, and long-lasting method of generating power when done correctly. And that's a significant component of why there are nearly 500 active nuclear reactors across the globe. There definitely aren't any off the globe, though, which is why the sudden interest in lunar nuclear fission is a little surprising. Even early iterations of the new project are less than four years old, pushing back to May 2018. May revealed the successful experiment of combined NASA and Department of Energy engineering teams, which safely brought about the wonderfully named Krusty. Meaning the kilopower reactor using Stirling technology, Krusty was a smaller scale fission reactor experiment using highly enriched uranium fuel. Part of the greater kilopower project, Krusty became a successful footnote in NASA's reach for accessible and easy lunar fission. However, even though it wasn't greatly acknowledged, Krusty should have been more than a footnote. The small reactor provided upwards of 10 kilowatts of power, which isn't really meaningful without context. According to NASA, the same energy output of one kilopower reactor, or in this case, a Krusty, is enough to run several average households continuously for at least 10 years. With that logic and average electricity consumption of 11,000 kilowatt hours per year, a small kilopower reactor should produce anywhere between 22,000 and 50,000 kilowatt hours per year. That's around 5% of the power produced by a standard nuclear fission reactor in the same amount of time, meaning between 20 and 40 kilopower stations are equivalent to one full-sized atomic reactor. Nonetheless, it seems NASA doesn't want to ferry 20 to 40 nuclear devices at around 1,500 kilograms apiece to the moon. So, as part of the agency's beautifully named Fission System to Power Exploration on the Moon's Surface and Beyond, NASA mentioned its communications with companies for designs to produce at least 40 kilowatts of power. That's four times the current output of kilopower, or, quote, enough to continuously power 30 households for 10 years. Interestingly, that's also the same output as stated by NASA to provide enough juice to power robust operations on the Moon and Mars. While there's not too much legitimate information as to what robust operations are, or how much power living and accommodations would take, there is more than enough presented by NASA on the Krusty reactor. And well, while it's not a 40 kilowatt design, it's exciting. That would start with the fact that Krusty is, according to NASA, the first nuclear-powered operation of a truly new fission reactor concept in the U.S. in over 40 years. Although Krusty seems like a miniaturized reactor, there are some remarkable benchmarks and data presented. Part of the wow factor of Krusty would be the price tag. Sub $20 million for R&D, manufacturing, and testing. Remember, according to NASA, it would take just four Krusties to power whatever robust operations are. We can expect around 40 to 50% of the total price to be research and development, putting the actual production value at just 10 to $12 million, or, well, 40 to $48 million for powering operations on the moon, for 10 years. Speaking of power, Krusty ended up outperforming every single variable tested by NASA. From posted results, there are some key points listed. For example, it took the little reactor just one and a half hours to reach 800 degrees Celsius, compared to the performance metric of three hours. While that might not seem too significant, it's an hour and a half less time that landing astronauts would have to rely on onboard power generation. An hour and a half to maximum performance are incredibly fast, especially put up against the twice as large benchmark expected. After an hour and a half, power generation ramps over 4 kilowatts of thermal energy, 
which outdoes the expected for to some degree. There's not a specific amount over 4 kilowatts, but it's over nonetheless. Things are specific for coolant losses, with transient temperatures under 15 degrees Celsius recorded compared to the expected 50 degrees. It's even more impressive for maximum coolant, which hit just 10 degrees Celsius transient instead of the 50 degree expectation. Both these numbers point towards Krusty being incredibly efficient in events tested where the coolant was either wholly drained or applied. Although NASA expected a 50 degree temporary shift in the temperature of the coolant, Krusty posted just 10 and 15 degrees for a much safer test. That reduced transient temperature was in addition to higher performance and efficiency, which came in at over 35%, 40% greater than the performance metric, and pointing heavily towards an extended life in space. As for cutting the more powerful than expected Krusty, NASA found electric turndown was at a ratio of 16 to 1, powering down more than eight times more effective than what was expected at half power. Krusty not only boosted production, but passed every fail-safe test and accident scenario. The entire experiment was freakishly successful and quite scary, considering NASA completed the project in-house for just $20 million. Compared to the money-wasting, ineffective production of the Space Launch System, a revolutionary technology like this is unexpected from NASA. However, it still happened, and it's a great sign towards crossing the 40-kilowatt production goal. If NASA can reach 10 kilowatts with a budget under $20 million, exceed every performance expectation and benchmark, and the entire thing passed every failure test thrown at it, imagine what can be done with more significant funding. And imagine the benefits of a more powerful fission system. Whether it's in powering colonies, providing greater power to growing earthly demand, or pushing future launch systems into space, there are growing possibilities and more extraordinary ideas every day including, apparently, at NASA. The project's manager, Todd Toffel, has mentioned the technology could eventually be used to mature nuclear propulsion systems. That's also known as powering complete launches from one power source, reused for what could be years. If that's not exciting, you should check out past experiments like NERVA or Project Rover, both programs launched by the U.S. government. There's some incredible context into why this concept was such a big deal with the atomic age even though its significance should have carried over into today. That's because fission-powered rockets could theoretically bring more incredible speeds, lighter systems, more efficient consumption, quicker production, full reusability, and more. All those would be in addition to powering entire Moon and Mars colonies in a safe and frankly quite small package. We're looking at the ability to produce pretty large amounts of energy around the clock in any environment, in a small form factor and light enclosure. The whole kilopower project and the nuclear fission power project have uses past moon bases, as they're usable as energy replacements on Earth, fuel sources, rocket power, and more. However, all this relies on the final product of whatever company picks up NASA's contract, hopefully over-delivering on the 40-kilowatt performance expectation. Nevertheless, with the quiet success of Krusty, there's some serious potential within the entire concept even if it's not getting the credit it deserves. Fortunately, though, we don't have to wait too long to see. The contract from NASA and the Department of Energy requires initial designs to be submitted over a 12-month period before being launched to the moon for a demonstration. With how fast this project is moving, we might see results by the end of 2022 or early 2023, meaning we're not too far away from what could be the power source of future colonies and even down here on Earth. So what do you think? Even though not too many people are looking at Krusty, Kilopower, and the new power project as potentially revolutionary, could it be? Every test run so far has been blown out of the water, although thankfully not literally. We've seen greater performance, faster startup times, higher efficiency, and what seems to be fail-safe security all within a $20 million package. Let us know your thoughts on the whole idea below, and make sure to check out some of our other videos on life support on the moon if you're interested. Either way, we'll see you next time.